OK, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. OK, perfect. All right, I just ask everyone to mute their microphone as a housekeeping matter. And today we are going to go over a suspicious package and bomb threat procedures and protocols. Now, the, the whole reason why we're doing this is because there hasn't been this type of training. Uh, you've been selected to take this training because you either handle deliveries, packages, logistics, um, whether they be FedEx or from vendors or delivery services or the US mail and or and or you um, answer the phone from the public. And that's why we're going to have two parts here. We're going to talk first about uh, bomb threats and you know, if you've read the news in our country, uh, you know, there's been a lot of civil unrest in 2020 among COVID and other things, and these things do happen. Um, you know, Embraer uh, luckily is not a company that, you know, does animal testing or is really in the news with anything controversial. But, you know, when there's in periods of unrest, in periods of uh, when there's high turnover, reductions in force, things of that nature, it does happen. And I just, you know, went through um, Google just in the last month. Uh, we're doing this uh, in November. Of, it's actually December of 2020 now, but, you know, we started doing these series in uh, November and just in the month of November, you know, there was a bomb threat, uh, three bomb threats in Miami. Um, they 99.9% .9 of the time, they do end up to be hoaxes or they're just a scare to shut down a business uh, to create you know havoc to do damage financially to a company but they do happen and you know 2016 uh there was you know last time i pulled statistics there was 1536 the average between you know anywhere between 1300 and 1600 a year and um, we're just going to give you the tools you need to you know, handle uh, what to do in the event one of these things happens. Now, along with your invite, you would have received a document that we came up with at Corporate Security called Bomb Threat uh, Protocols. And basically, it's a step-by-step -step guide. But what's really important in there, in that document that we put out, is there. Um, there's there's a couple attachments, and one of those attachments we're going to go over in detail. And you're going to see a short video. Uh, which I think will be very, very helpful for you, but it's a checklist. And all we're asking you to do is keep that checklist somewhere in your workspace, in your workstation, and know where it is in the event that you would ever have to handle or answer one of these calls. Um, we don't expect you to memorize or, you know, it's going to be a, um, if you did get one of these type of phone calls, it would be a very upsetting experience for you and we realize that and that's why a checklist is handy just basically goes through exactly what you were supposed to ask uh, you know gives you a space to write notes down and things of that nature the other document we have prepared for you is a standard um, you know pictorial from the u.s government on um, suspicious packages and and what to look out for what are the um, indicators of of you know a suspicious package um, that could potentially contain you know either a bomb or a hoax and i i point this out here you know between 1983 and 1992 there were 350 bomb threats and scares for various reasons at the world trade center there was an actual bombing of the world trade center in uh, 1993 and then certainly everybody knows what happens on 9 11 but you know, we even though most of these are hoaxes, we take every one of them serious. And you know, a lot of times in the business realm, um, they're usually for a revenge, right? There's a termination, some disciplinary action. And I could tell you a true story from where I worked for prior to Embraer. Uh, we had a factory up in Tennessee, and a uh, woman was terminated. Her boyfriend, who used to work for the company, who had just gotten out of jail from uh, uh, probation on uh, felony charges, 
was mad that she got terminated and she was terminated for cause willful misconduct and he started calling in bomb threats um, and the reason for that was revenge for her termination these things happen um, you know I, I throw this other article from uh, from Florida um, I think this was from uh, the Orlando area where you know a state agency uh, was evacuated due to a bomb threat and that's just in the last couple months I mean these things do happen it's not we're not expecting it to happen but if it does happen we want you to know what to do and just a little bit about the type of person that does this right it's usually a, a man right middle-aged men um, they usually do it via phone but now in the days of internet and social media and anonymizer websites and anonymizer email addresses and things of that nature uh, voice over internet protocols and whatnot you know they they do this in the old days it used to come over a payphone now, I don't I can't tell you the last time I saw a payphone right I don't think they even exist anymore um, you know everybody uses a cell phone but you can get a throw down phone um, you can go into some of these you know various cricket metro PCS pay by cash you know um, you know register your phone to Mickey Mouse from Disney World and nobody's asking any questions right and it's pretty much untraceable I mean we can track this police will track the cell phone towers and we'll find you but you know for the for all intents and purposes uh, this is what they're this is today's technology in the days of cell phones of of, of what they're doing um, generally people that do this do get caught um, it's, it's very rare that they don't get caught um, but they, they still do it so um, you know it could come in the form of a note left uh, it could be you know a package delivery things of that nature but that's basically you know an understanding of, of the problem and and who does it generally in the business world the motivation is termination retaliation for a termination or a layoff or some wrong that the person who's doing it perceives that um, he received he or she received from the company and then there are times when it's it's done to um, uh, receive a ransom payment um, that, that's a little rare along the lines of a bomb threat is also a hoax call and a hoax device that's something that looks like a bomb it's done to scare people and it's done to shut down a business and you know uh, put them out of business for a day maybe but it, it causes disruption it causes distractions it certainly causes uh, revenues to be lost uh, when something like that happens now here's a video I'm going to play for you this is from the Department of Homeland Security is really professionally done what I want you to focus on is how the woman working for the company reacts she doesn't freak out she doesn't scream she doesn't yell she doesn't lose it right because she has a plan she's been trained she remains calm and that's the most important thing you can do it is is trying and as emotional of an experience this would be for anyone to receive this type of call the best thing you could do is remain calm cool collected and take notes and what she'll pull out from her desk is this form that we have prepared for you that came along in the invitation and it's attached to the um, to the uh, bomb threat protocols that we've prepared for you. Um, so you you pull that out and simply fill it in. So let's watch what happens. to speed. My name is Veronica Simon. I'm an office administrator at my place of work and today is like any other Tuesday. Good afternoon. This is Veronica. How may I help you? There is going to be a bomb today. 
In a bomb threat call, the best thing you can do is to remain calm and keep the caller on the line for as long as possible. Your goal here is to obtain as much information as possible from the caller so you can relay this information to the authorities. If you have a moment, write a note to someone nearby. I'll get one of my co-workers' attention, and they can contact the authorities to inform them that a bomb threat call is in progress. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? There's going to be a bomb today. People are going to die. Now that I've alerted my co-workers about the threat, they can activate our bomb threat management plan and call 911 from a safe location. If your employer doesn't have a plan yet, you can go to www.dhs.gov slash OBP for more information and to find this checklist. Next, I'm going to ask the caller a series of questions from this checklist, remembering to be as polite as possible and demonstrating the same amount of respect I would normally provide to anyone else. Sir, when is the bomb going to explode? In one hour, if all operations of your institution have not ceased. Don't forget to listen for background noise. Hear those cars passing by in the background of the call? Make a mental note of anything you hear so you can mark it down later after the call. Next, I'm going to ask the caller where the bomb is located. In doing so, as with all these questions, I'm going to avoid prompting the caller with names or locations of the facilities, which will provide more clues about the identity of the caller and the validity of the threat. If he provides a specific place or building, he may be familiar with the location and vice versa. Okay, and where is the bomb located? <clears throat> Inside the main lobby. Did you hear the caller clear his throat there? Make another mental note of any irregularities in the caller's voice or speech pattern so we can mark that down later as well. Okay, sir, and what does the bomb look like? It's inside the black duffel bag. Black duffel bag. All right. And what will cause the bomb to explode? I will detonate the bomb in one hour if my demands have not been met. Sir, did you place this? Hello, sir? After the caller hangs up, it's important that I don't hang up my phone. Instead, I'll place it on my desk, jot down, and as much detail as possible, information from the call. Towards the bottom of the car, there's a checklist for details about the caller's voice, any background noise, and the threat language. Here's where those mental notes from earlier really come into play. Information like this can be crucial in identifying the caller and legitimacy of the threat. Last but not least, I'm going to note the number the call was received from, as shown on my caller ID. After I'm done making notes, it's time to share my information with my leadership and local authorities. I'm going to avoid touching any switches or buttons of any kind. I'm going to avoid using my cell phone unless I have no other choice, in case it might detonate the bomb. So you took the call. Tell us what you know. The caller had a deep voice. Okay, so, um, you know, just to recap uh, what you saw in that video, project calmness, move and speak slowly, quietly and confidently, and then try to write down exactly the threat as it was communicated to you. Um, contact 911 and then the office of the chief security officer. You should have Charles and my phone number plugged into your um, cell phones, um, you know, if you ever need us for this or any other incident. Um, and then that bomb threat checklist that she pulls out in that video, that's what we've prepared for you, and that's attached uh, just a handy item. You don't have to keep this on top of your desk. Just keep it in a drawer. Just know where it's at in the event, the unlikely event, that you would ever need this. We don't expect this to happen, but just be prepared. It's the old Boy Scout motto. Uh, be prepared. So, you know, just have it available for you and know where it's at in the event that you ever had to deal with one of these. Okay, now moving on, something that you might uh, have to deal with, especially, you know, dealing in logistics and, um, you know, or just accepting packages on behalf of the company, but handling a suspicious package. Not every you know, um, there's a difference between, you know, a suspicious package and an unattended 
package, right? Um, and this video right now is going to explain that in detail. Um, this is, you know, we don't want you to start freaking out when you start seeing unattended packages, right? A, a purse left on a um, conference room table after a, um, uh, you know, after a meeting was held there is not suspicious, right? It's unattended. You don't know where it came from or somebody left it there and based on the time and place and circumstances, that's a normal event. Somebody left it there by mistake and, you know, they, they lost it. Now that's a lot different than a suspicious package and that's what we're going to focus on right now. Most Americans know that something left unattended could be a security risk. But if you encounter such an item, do you know how to determine whether it is a harmless item or a serious threat? And do you know what to do? Let's start with definitions. An unattended item is of unknown origin and content, like a suitcase, backpack, or shipping box. There are no obvious signs signs of being suspicious, other than the fact that you cannot connect it to an owner. It is also not correlated to suspicious circumstances, such as a threat that has been received or an item that is out of place. In contrast, a suspicious item is anything such as a package or vehicle that has indications that it might contain an explosive device or hazardous material. It may be suspiciously placed in proximity to people or valuable assets. And it could have characteristics like wires, electronics, or unusual sounds, powders, or odors. Why does it matter that you can tell the difference? Because it changes the way you should react. If it's suspicious, you need to act fast and decisively. Notify proper authorities and call 911. If it's an unattended item, you can take a little more time with your response. Use the HOT acronym to help make the determination. Ask yourself, is the item hot? H, hidden. Is the item placed out of sight? Or does it appear to have been purposely concealed? O, obviously suspicious. Does it have unexplainable wires or electronics or other bomb-like components? T, not typical. Is the item out of place for this location or potentially related to a threat? If the answer is yes to any of these, consider the item suspicious. In either case, you need to exercise caution. Another acronym, RAIN, can help you remember what to do. R, recognize the indicators of a suspected explosive device. Remember that indicators can relate to the characteristics of the item itself, but also the larger context of the event, location, time, or general threat landscape. A, avoid the area. Don't touch the suspected explosive device. Instead, immediately move and direct others to do the same. I, isolate the suspected item. Establish the perimeter using a tool like the bomb threat standoff card and direct people away. N, notify appropriate emergency services. Be prepared to describe the suspicious items and any suspicious people. The more detail you can provide, the better. And remember, avoid using cell phones or radios and wireless communications. It could detonate the device. Hot and rain are tools that can help anyone be ready to respond to a suspicious device. Let's see these two tools in action in two different scenarios. There's a there's a bag over there. Yeah. It beeped at me, and I'm like, of course I'm the one to find a bomb, right? It's beeping. Yeah. Let me see. Ah, that's weird. Security said there have been some bomb threats on Twitter about this convention. Oh wait, you're serious? I was just kidding. Is that an antenna? Yep. There's kind of a chemical smell too. Is it a bomb? Hey, keep it down. Don't panic. I'm gonna call 911. Mm -hmm. 
No, no wireless. We're still too close. Let's get away. We'll call from the landline. This device passed the hot test. It was hidden and obviously suspicious, with electronic sounds, wires, and a chemical smell. These employees recognized the indicators, but they should have backed away to avoid the device sooner. Now the facility should isolate the area by establishing a perimeter while they notify appropriate emergency services. It is also a priority to ensure that the witnesses who discovered the device are kept in a safe area and remain available for interview by appropriate responders. Let's look at another more common scenario. Excuse me, I just noticed that there's a bag over here. It's not yours? Definitely not. And I haven't seen anybody else, and it was here when I got here a minute ago. I, I just worry. You know, you hear about things like suitcase bombs. You're right. It could be anything. But it's also pretty easy for someone to leave a bag. I'll go take a look. Go ahead. There's a luggage tag right there. Maybe we can find an owner. I'm not going to touch the bag. I'm just going to try to find a name. And hey, bingo, there's a name and a number. Good. Hey, Randy, there's an unattended bag here. It's probably nothing, but I'm going to step inside and see if I can reach the owner. Can you block off this area for now? You got it. Let me have you wait further up the platform. I'm going to call this number from a landline and see what we can find out. Excuse me, folks. I'm sorry. We're closing this area off for safety. Could you step back over there for me, please? Sure. Oh, thank you. Good news. Found the owner. He was afraid he left his bag on the train. He'll be here in a few minutes to pick it up. In this case, the item failed the hot test. It was not hidden, had no obviously suspicious indicators, apart from being unattended, and was fairly typical for its location in a busy train station. Although it appeared to only be an unattended bag, this astute employee exercised caution to handle the situation perfectly. He tried to determine the owner, needed all this, while helping to reassure a concerned bystander. At some point in your life, you will probably encounter a box or package without an owner. Just remember, every unattended item or suspicious package should be treated with caution. Use what you have just learned to know the difference. Take the appropriate actions and be safe. Okay, so suspicious packages. What's some signs that we like to look out for? Um, it's either an unattended package or it's an unexpected package, right? Uh, certainly indicators would be, like they said, protruding wires, aluminum foil, powder-like substance, or an oil stain or something leaking from the package. The, the package would emit an odor or a sound, like a beep, like you saw in the video. Um, a lot of times, you know, it would be suspicious if it has excessive postage or sometimes if it has foreign postage. And then no return address or a patently fictitious or non-existent return address, such as, you know, Mickey Mouse Disney World, right? It's not a, not a, it's a fictitious address. It's not, it's not a real address. Uh, the postmark doesn't match the return address. So you have a postmark from North Carolina, but it's, um, you know, it's coming from Texas, you know, return address from Texas. Uh, but the, the, a real key usually is it bears restrictive endorsements such as, you know, personal, private, confidential, um, you know, the, the, or it has misspelled or incorrect titles or poor distorted handwriting. And then the names and addresses sometimes might be prepared with a homemade label or cut and paste lettering that are cut out from like magazines or things of that nature. 
And, you know, another indicator, it's unprofessionally wrapped. It has several combinations of tape or string used to secure that package. It's like it's over wrapped, it's over secured. It has too much tape on it. And, you know, like other endorsements might be like fragile, handle with care, rush, do not delay, you know, send directly to the CEO or some official in the company, you know. Um, the package might feel rigid or appear uneven or lopsided or feel, you know, like a regular shape with soft spots or bulges, you know. It generally, you know, what makes it suspicious is a whole combination of factors, but, you know, not just one single factor, you know, just because something is sent with too much postage doesn't mean, oh, it's a suspicious package and it's going to have a bomb in it, you know. You have to use your judgment, but, you know, if it if it has a whole combination of different factors that makes you feel uneasy, you should treat it that way, right? Um, we're not asking you to overreact, and we're not asking you, you know, but what we are saying is just know the indicators. And if you see a, a number of these indicators on something that just doesn't feel right to you, it's better to be, you know, safe than, rather than sorry. You know, so what I'd ask you to do, what do you do in the event that something appear suspicious to you. Number one, remain calm, listen to your intuition, and don't worry about embarrassment if you're wrong. Like I said, it's better to be safe than, than sorry. Um, if you have to call 911, call from a landline, all right? Um, you know, no cell phone. And, and generally the rule of thumb is get away at least if you have to use a cell phone, probably about 30 feet, right? Notify security, notify us if we're not available. Uh, the highest ranking, you know, uh, a, a supervisor or, or, or someone, you know, in a supervisory position. And then isolate the package, just like you did in the, in the, um, in the video, and close off the area. But one thing I would ask you to do is do not place it in water. Don't put it in a drawer. Don't put it in a cabinet. Don't put it in any closed or confined space, all right? Just keep others away. Um, you know, notify security and, and uh, we'll take care of, you know, we'll, we'll guide it through uh, based on the indicators. So with that, uh, that is your suspicious package and, um, uh, you know, um, uh, bomb threat training. Does anyone have any questions at this time? No questions? Well, we'll end this session, and if you have any further questions, if anything comes to mind, you can reach out to either myself, John Kufta, your Chief Security Officer, or Charles Sordarno. Um, we both form the security team here at Embraer in, at our facilities in North America, so give us a call if you have questions on this or any other items, or if you have any other topics that you would like us to go over. Thanks for your time, and have a great day.